Welcome everyone. Can you see the slides and hear me okay? Fabulous, I'm getting the thumbs up there. So welcome, I'm Jessica Ellery and I work for Oxford Archaeology North. Um, I'm usually in the field digging, but I'm currently on secondment with the outreach team. And prior to working for Oxford Archaeology, I was a research artist working on interdisciplinary art and archaeology projects with a focus on the illicit trafficking of heritage and archaeology at risk. So our earlier sessions today have provided an excellent overview of unethical and illegal activities impacting the archaeological record, as well as the challenge of tourism. And this talk is a distilled version of my master's thesis and is going to explore how archaeology is re represented in popular simulation video games. And we'll find many of the themes from our earlier talks today reflected in the case studies presented, um, sorry, and often presented as legitimate archaeological behaviour. So, oop. Why? There we go. Sorry, working out how to move the slides along. Um, so starting with the research goals, archaeology is both the subject and setting of many video games. Pictured here are two wildly different examples which both adapt Egyptian archaeology. You've got Assassin's Creed Origins and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Um, and research to date has predominantly focused on the action, strategy and adventure genres, often finding archaeological representations in video games to be both inaccurate and unethical. Um, I cite Dennis, Wattrell and Reinhard here, um, but there are, is some incredible research happening in this field and if you'd like more readings on this topic, please do let me know, I'm really happy to share. There's just some fantastic work going on that I, I can't expand on, unfortunately, in today's session. Um, but this focus on those specific genres meant that the first goal of this research was to address the genre gap by identifying whether unethical archaeological representation is limited to the genres of um, action, strategy and adventure, or whether it exists across the video game industry. I chose simulation for two reasons. Firstly, because the use and adaption of simulations is familiar to archaeology. And secondly, because at the most basic level, these games aim to simulate some aspect of real life. And this has very interesting implications for the second goal of this study, which was to understand how these representations might impact player behaviour. So two case studies were chosen, The Sims 4 Jungle Adventure and Animal Crossing New Horizons. Um, the Sims is made by Maxis and Electronic Arts, uh, who I might, would refer to as EA during this talk, and Animal Crossing New Horizons by Nintendo. And they were chosen because they will allow players to conduct excavation and are exceedingly popular with their audiences. The Sims is one of the most popular PC franchises of all time, and New Horizons sold 13.41 million units in just their first six weeks after launch. Now, it's worth noting that at the time of the study, New Horizons only allowed for the excavation of fossils. Any archaeological object, such as the bust of Nefertiti they feature in game, was presented as an art object. Um, however, recent updates have added gyroids, which are statues that play music, and they're based off ancient Japanese Haniwa sculptures, which were buried with the dead. As you can imagine, this has its own set of challenges, but they're not addressed in this study. I do, however, intend to explore this in a future addendum to the original research. These case studies were analysed using a narrative research methodology. It is an excellent method for identifying themes and narrative devices, which allowed me to acknowledge the subjectivity of player experience without undermining the results. The data was recorded through screenshots, audio recordings and handwritten notes, then transcribed and analysed to discern patterns and outlying data. These observations were coded, then clustered, to provide an overview of how archaeology is represented in these games. Unfortunately, we don't have time to look at the findings in full detail, but I've picked some key elements and personal favourites to share with you today. So, starting with Sims Jungle Adventure. In Jungle Adventure, archaeology can only be conducted at the holiday destination of Selva Dorada, an exotic jungle complete with waterfalls, Mesoamerican-inspired temples and Spanish colonial architecture. The name comes across as a play on El Dorado, bringing up images of Spanish treasure fleets exploiting locals in a race for gold. Now there are two cultures in Selva Dorada, the Amiskins, an ancient civilization who built the temple and ruins, and the Selva Doradans, who currently live there and run the marketplace. The players meet many Selva Doradans, in fact you can even develop a skill in Selva Doradan culture in game, but you never meet any Amiskins, and the connection between the cultures is never explained. In addition, you find hi-fi systems and other modern trappings like industrial stools, um, inside the ruins, which leave you feeling like you've stumbled into a strange theme park. I cannot believe that Electronic Arts were unaware of the colonial culture they were presenting here, 
And from an archaeological perspective, this is a past we are actively trying to address, not enthusiastically reinforce as is happening here. Moving to stereotypes, the Indiana Jones stereotype was everywhere from the adventure outfits that it belongs in a museum messages when you donate artifacts to museums. There were curses, booby traps, treasure hunting, walking skeletons. That being said, I think the stereotypes are one of the least damaging aspects of representation in this game, as players are mostly aware that magic and curses are fiction. What they're less equipped to identify is unethical practice. The excavation mechanic was a wonderful surprise. It didn't acknowledge context, and even my attempts to keep context index were sadly undermined by the game's stacking artifacts of a similar type, so I could never tell what came from where. However, it made more effort than I've experienced in a game before to demonstrate different processes involved in archaeology, from taking photographs and recording to analysing and conserving objects. The game also acknowledged that archaeology is a skill you have to hone over time, as demonstrated in this table here. Thinking about ethics in particular, the ethics in this game are really poor. I've already mentioned the problematic colonial overtones. Add to this excavating without permission, taking artifacts across borders, selling them without concern, being asked to authenticate objects for money by shady individuals who send you emails but not their real name. There was a lot to unpack in the game. And whilst there were positive aspects to the excavation mechanic and skill tree, ultimately in-game excavation was no different from real, real world looting. To make it laughably worse, your character could die from a booby trap, but there were no in-game punishments or rewards for ethical or unethical behaviour to help players identify good practice. In fact, the screenshot here outlines a situation where um, I made an ethical choice to leave the archaeology in situ and not react, and my character was punished by nearly burning to death from mystical fire shooting from a totem pole. In comparison, New Horizons makes little of the Indiana Jones adventure stereotype, instead making use of the image of the pure scholar in the form of Blathers, the museum curator. Although the game is set on an exotic island, this is part of the overall game narrative rather than specifically connected to archaeological activity. Therefore, the setting doesn't have the same negative impact as Selva Dorada. That being said, later in the game, you are encouraged to visit other islands and apply a finder's keepers rule. So whilst the colonial overtones are not quite as overt, they are still present. Excavation is very simple in comparison to The Sims. You find cracks in the ground, you stick your shovel in and voila, you have a fossil. Your in-game discoveries of fossils, insects, fish and art in this game all have real world counterparts. And what's uniquely interesting about Animal Crossing games is that using these discoveries to build a museum for the benefit of the community is a driving feature of the game narrative. It's key, particularly at the beginning of the game, and you cannot ignore it. Also, when you donate to the museum, the curator blathers will teach you about your donation. In this way, the game designers have not only highlighted the cultural value of our museums, but they're using the mechanic as an opportunity to educate players about their own world. On a less positive note, we have Red the Fox, a shady individual who visits the island on his boat, the Jolly Red Treasure Trawler. He sells artworks, one of which will be genuine, with the others being fakes. And red is the only way for players to collect the artwork they need to complete their museum. In this way, the game justifies illegal activity under the guise of cultural development. As I'm sure many of you know, this is sadly not an unfamiliar scenario in museum and art market practice even today, sometimes being justified as the saving of artifacts. So if I was to summarise, how is archaeology represented in the simulation genre? Well, these findings tell us that the same stereotypes and colonial messages seen in action, strategy and adventure games are repeated here. And whilst there is some complexity, the games reduce archaeology to basic excavation and analysis, all while ignoring the fundamental principle of context. They did not acknowledge or reflect ethical practice, instead presenting looting behaviour as equivalent to archaeological excavation and actively encouraging uncritical engagement with illicit markets. Even our trusted scholar is guilty. Blathers never asks for provenance and he often considers buying your duplicates for his own personal collection, never mind their value to the wider community. Artifacts are valued for their financial and aesthetic qualities, with New Horizons thankfully also celebrating scientific and cultural values. So what? Why should we care about how archaeology is represented in our video games? Well, there's a lot of research on this and my paper explores it in greater detail, but we only have time for the headlines today. So first piece of key research is that while researchers don't agree on whether games cause violence, they do agree that video games desensitize players to violence. Second key thing is that Sika argues that while players are not victims of unethical games, 
This is because they are empowered agents who can choose what they play, can reflect on their in-game actions, and then differentiate between their own ethics and the ethics of the game itself. Third key piece of research, fiction is key. Tavernor states that if what was fictionally occurring in the world of Grand Theft Auto was genuinely occurring, the player would not be enjoying it quite so much. So what does that mean for our case studies? Well, firstly, it means that if players are at risk of being desensitized to the most violent of crimes, then we have to accept that they're also at risk of being desensitized to unethical and in some cases clearly illegal archaeological activity by playing these games. We also know they are less able to act as empowered agents, something which SICART requires if they are to avoid harm from unethical games. This is because A, audiences are ill-equipped to identify unethical practice due to its prevalence in popular culture, and B, audiences for these games include children who are not mature enough to exercise the critical self-reflection required to protect themselves from harm. In this way, SICART's research outlining how to protect players from unethical video games actually reinforces just how harmful our case studies have the potential to be. Lastly, to consider Tavernor's point that the fiction of the game is key, well, these games are not pure fiction. In fact, they aim to emulate and reflect real life in very tangible ways, with New Horizons going so far as to mirror the seasons and weather of a player's real world. Now, Bumatel argued that high quality video game graphics would mislead players into believing in-game representations over actual archeological evidence. If you follow on from their thinking, a game which simulates real life to such an extent as these ones do is primed to mislead player understanding about how to relate to archaeology. Moving forward, I would recommend research into additional simulation games in order to add to our understanding of this genre. I also recommend a participant study to closely examine how players are impacted by playing these games. These are both really important steps to corroborating the findings from my thesis. However, I also believe that simulation genre offers unique opportunities for the development of an ethically conscious archaeology video game. So if there are any budding video game designers in the audience, I'd really love to talk to you because the same elements that make these games good at teaching unethical behavior position them to be excellent for teaching good practice. It is said that an ethical archaeology game would not be fun or popular, but simulation games have this really strange ability to make the most mundane tasks fun, whether that's completing homework in The Sims or picking up your weeds in Animal Crossing. And we as archaeological professionals know better than anyone that our practice is far from boring. So as with any material culture, games reflect the cultures that make them. They reveal popular perspectives and ideologies, but they also have the power to change them. If the archaeological and wider heritage community are remotely concerned about the representation of their discipline, about preserving the archaeological record and decolonizing their foundations, if, in other words, they value their own ethical ideals and principles, they must seriously consider the messages widely shared through video games and other cultural mediums and actively work to produce ethically conscious content. Thank you very much. I'll quickly, for the sake of the recording, scroll through the bibliography and you could have a look at that in your own time as and when the recordings are released. Thank you very much.